guys, now that you've completed the installation, it is time to launch our management studio and get connected to our engine. So we can just go to the start menu and we can just look for the Microsoft SQL Server tools. And it may have a number. The number may vary based on the version. If you're up with 2017 and the latest SSMS, then you shouldn't have a problem. Uh, previous versions of SSMS will still work. So I'm just saying that in case you would have had a previous installation, then you may see a different number or it may not be in this format. Either way, if you have an abnormal experience, just drop me a line, leave me a message, and I'll be sure to follow up with you and we can work through it together. Otherwise, you may just expand this and you can look for Microsoft SQL Server Management. Of course, if you have Windows, then you can always use that search. So we'll just go ahead and click this and we can just pin it to our taskbar, pin to the start so it's accessible more easily. So we can just go ahead and launch that. Okay, so upon launch, you will be given this tiny dialog box and it will state the server name. Now, upon launch, you'll be given this dialog box, which asks you to connect to the server. It should be pre-filled with a server name, which would be a combination of your machine name and your instance name. So at the end of the installation, you would have seen where they indicated an instance and the default name is SQL Express and then authentication by default would be tied to your Windows authentication account. And so if all of this is there and it looks okay, you can just go ahead and click connect. Mm -hmm. And to know that you're successfully connected, you will see over to your object explorer to your left side that you are connected and you can expand and look in databases and you see a bunch of options here. So author our very first query, what we need to do is just click the button, new query. The keyboard shortcut control N will also open up a new query window. And then we can see that all we're given is a blank text file. And there are certain things here that you may want to pay attention to. Our object explorer is still here. Of course, you can set it to auto hide if you want more real estate. I like leaving it docked so you can just use that push pin to toggle that setting. And we see here that when we click in the empty text area, we see some life occurring up here. This drop down or this word master really triggers a drop down box which shows us all of the databases that are currently in the system. These are all default databases and I would advise that you do not delete them. So even if you go exploring and you go into the system databases and you'll see them listed there, I advise you to not manipulate these, at least not right now. There may come a time when you become a SQL guru, but right now you can just leave those alone. So as I said, we want to write our first query to create a database and we're going to call this database school. So the first thing we want is the word create. So we write create and just to point out, SQL is not case sensitive. So I will write the SQL syntax in all caps so that you can see what is syntax and what isn't. But ultimately, our editor will highlight it as blue as we go along and what whatever is not syntax, it will usually leave in black. So we want to create a database and we're going to call it school. I'll just leave school in lower caps. Some people end with a semicolon, but it is not absolutely necessary. So we have our query here. And then what we will do is press execute, or we can just use our keyboard shortcut F5. They do the same thing. And then once we do that, we'll see it says commands executed successfully. All right, so I just zoomed in so you can see it. Commands completed successfully. Now, how do I validate that a new database has been created? We have a drop down over here labeled databases. We already dropped it down, and even if we collapse and expand it, we still don't see the database. So, what we will do is refresh, and then we see it appear. So, ultimately, as many databases as you will create will get listed directly under the databases part of this file explorer tree. 
So once again, you'll see all the databases under system databases. You can leave those alone. And as many databases as you will create, you will see them listed here. So I will go ahead and create school dash test just to highlight and demonstrate. And then you can see that there's a red line here saying you cannot use a dash in the name of a database. So there are some strict rules. People tend to camel case or use underscores. Uh, there are restrictions and this editor is quick to point out what you can and cannot do before it even allows you to execute. So we'll go ahead and create school underscore test. And we'll see command completed successfully. And once again, we just click databases, refresh, and then we will see that we have our second database listed there.